Good afternoon, I'm Marwa Abdelrahim, and I'm Samantha Lakey, and today we are going to be discussing the enzyme glutathione S-transferase omega-1 found in Homo sapiens, or GTSO1 for short throughout this presentation. So, what GTSO1 does is it catalyzes different reactions by participating in redox reactions and the transfer of functional groups on glutathione to um, reduce glutathione by forming disulfide bonds, to um, break down metabolites in our body to prevent oxidative stress, free radicals, and damage to our cells. So this enzyme, it, through the techniques of northern blotting, this enzyme was found to be ubiquitous, meaning it's found throughout tissues in our entire body. And tissues throughout our entire body and um, however northern blotting the techniques also found out that there is very high expression in areas throughout our body that are prone to oxidative stress such as our liver, the lens of our eyes, the colon, the heart and a lot of other areas throughout our body and the pH that this enzyme work, works best in, functions best in is a pH of around 8 which is fairly basic and the isoelectric point is is known as the point where the enzyme essentially has no charge so GTSO1 stops function essentially and that's around a pH of 6.24 so GTSO1 belongs to the glutathione as transferase class specifically the the superfamily, specifically the omega class. And what they do is they break down glutathione to a xenobiotic substrate, which is a form of antioxidant needed to prevent oxidative damage or reduce stress in our cells to get rid of metabolites. So on the top we have glutathione, a GTSO1, the enzyme GTSO1. And as you can see, it is 241 amino acids long. It also contains two binding sites for glutathione. And the two binding sites are a valine and a lysine. And what those binding sites do is they help glutathione be less reactive. And the most related protein is on the bottom, which is GTSO1 found in nematodes. And they both have a C-terminal and an N-terminal domain that are fairly the same length as well as perform the same functions. And what I found interesting was GTSO1 found in C. elegans is mainly found in the small and large intestines rather than throughout our entire body like GTSO1 in humans. Domains. GTSO1 has two domains, an N-terminal domain highlighted in yellow and a C-terminal domain highlighted in pink. So the C-terminal domain is comprised of entirely alpha helices and the last two alpha helices, specifically 9 and 10, at the end of the enzyme amino acid sequence, they essentially fold over the top of the N-terminal domain and set the structure apart. And um, the other five alpha helices hi uh, have hydrogen bond interactions with the N-terminal domain, which essentially brings the enzyme together and stabilizes the form so GTSO1 can perform its function. So this picture is pretty awesome because it breaks down the structure of GTSO1. And as you can see, the purple cylinders represent alpha helices and the green arrows represent the beta sheets in GTSO1. And as you can see, this enzyme is comprised mainly of alpha helices and few beta sheets. And the beta sheets are anti-parallel because they're running in opposite directions, as you can see in the picture. The active site. So the active site is a cysteine residue 32, which is in the N-terminal domain the binding site of glutathione. And in, within the N-terminal domain, there is the thiol fold on top of the N-terminus. And what the thiol fold does is that it, it acts as a disulfide reductant 
to uh, reduce glutathione, for it to, um, act, to break down electrophiles. And what actually, what actually uh, catalyzes the reaction of GTSO1 and glutathione is a tyrosine residue on the thiol fold in the N-terminus domain. And that tyrosine helps catalyze the reaction, the binding. And um, the location of the cysteine residue is actually pretty neat because it lowers the pK of the thiol, making um, the thiol less reactive, which is what we want. So it can be a nucleophile and bind to glutathione for it to do its function and reduce stress in our cells. So this picture is um, a zoom in of the residues of in the catalytic binding site. So as you can see, there is a proline residue 33 and a phenylalanine residue in between, and they sandwich in the active site basically because they're right next to their, they sandwich in the active site cysteine 32. And what proline does, it causes a kink in the enzyme, and that kink sets the active site apart from the rest of the enzyme. So that helps stability and function of the cysteine residue. It lowers the reactivity because it's very reactive and that's not what we want. We want it to be specifically reactive with glutathione. And glutathione, after it is reduced, it helps neutralize electrophilic compounds within our bodies, um, <coughs> cytotoxic compounds particularly. And um, when it neutralizes them, we are then able to excrete them in our urine. So that's how we get rid of the metabolites we don't want in our cells, in our bodies. Catalytic binding pocket. So this picture breaks down the catalytic binding pocket really nicely. So the blue represents positive amino acid charges, and the red represents negative amino acid charges, and the white is neutral. And as you can see, hopefully from this picture, this enzyme is not entirely hydrophobic. So there is a tryptophan 222 residue in the catalytic binding pocket, and the nitrogen on tryptophan acts as a proton donor, so it donates protons, and that is pointed down in the catalytic binding pocket. And there, uh, also at the bottom of the binding pocket, there is an arginine 183, and that also acts as a proton donor, which makes the catalytic binding site, the enzyme, less hydrophobic. And as I mentioned earlier, the proline and the phenylalanine are sandwiched in the active site to create stability. And through the techniques of crystallization using a 2.0 um, resolution, the active site was determined, the domains were determined, and uh, the sequence was also determined. And here is one of our proposed mechanisms for the enzyme GST01. It involves the compound s glutathione, which is the substrate here. Um, prior to this mechanism, glutathione reacts with toxic halo-ketone to produce s glutathione. Um, the cysteine binding site of the GS201 then re reacts with um, the substrate, reducing it, and therefore um, producing acetophenone. Uh, this mechanism was initially proposed because of the structural and functional similarities between GS201 and s glutathione reductase, which is found in rat liver. Um, this mechanism appears to be unique to this enzyme, most likely uh, within the GST superclass, most likely due to it being the only um, class that has the cysteine binding site. Um, um, now, one of the methods, um, of the Western blotting method, was done in our used in our primary article, which was identification, characterization, and crystal structure of the omega class glutathione transferases. 
First, as part of the, a part of the purification process, the protein sample of GSC01 was given um, was tagged with polyhistidine um, at the end terminus. Then the histidine tagged GS201 was purified on nickel agri um, ag agricose, and then and the um, and then the mixture was eluted with 500 millimole solution of imidazole at the pH of H. Um, the purification, the purified recombinant GS201 was then mixed with rapid antiserum. Um, the rabbit nature serum then binded with the histidine tail um, um, as the primary antibody. It, um, then the, the mixture was rinsed off, getting rid of all the unbound rabbit enter serum, and then it was mixed with anti rabbit goat IgG, which was the second, um, the second antibody. As part of this process, the purified GSCO also underwent size exclusion chromatography, which was done on fast protein liquid chromatography system using a column with phosphate buffered saline solution. Um, the size exclusion chromatography revealed that the size of GSCO was roughly 56 kilodaltons in size, um, which was just a a little over twice the size of what was to be expected for a single molecule of the enzyme. This revealed that the structure of the enzyme was naturally formed a dimer. Um, the data collection also supported non-equilibrium behavior uh, for the formation of this dimer, with 90% of the sample process forming the dimer and 10% remaining a monomer. Uh, another methodology used was um, enzyme assays, and they were performed with compounds that were also substrates for um, other GST reactions. Um, for certain assays, um, enzyme, the enzyme was dialyzed to remove the di um, thio threat <laughs> threat tall, sorry. <laughs> um, as seen in this chart, the results um, were that there were negligible activity for many of the substrates of other um, GSTs. Um, also, the only the highest activity was thiol transferase, which means that this enzyme um, behaves most similar to glutathione uh, gluta redoxin. Um, there was also trace activity with a few other substrates of other classes, like alpha mu and pi classes, um, such as 1,2-dichloronitrobenzene. Um, so in conclusion, our enzyme glutathionine S-transferase tra omega was discovered only within the past two decades, so many of its possible mechanisms and functions are relatively unknown. Uh, it's part of the larger subclass of glutathione S transferase, and while well, for the most part it resembles it in them in structure, um, it has some significant differences, such as the N, uh, elongated end terminal extension and the cysteine binding group that cause it to behave much differently. Um, it's been shown to potentially play a, an important, important role in the detoxification of human cells. Specifically, cells that are found in areas of the body that undergo um, high oxidative stress. Um, it also possibly could be involved in many other important mechanisms, and only for further research on this enzyme um, in the future can reveal the extent to how significant it is for us. And these are our references. Thank you for listening.